There are a couple different scenarios in which you may see only one motor axis faulted in Pathpilot. In this video, we're only going to look at one of those situations, which is characterized by the axis you have the motor fault for being at the end of the travel for that axis. Unlike the M machines with stepper motors, the servo motors on the M axis are able to see the torque load. And in this situation, we're most likely jammed up on the polyurethane bumper at the end of the axis travel, and the motor sees that torque load and immediately faults out. So what we have to do to correct this situation is to pull the table off of that bumper manually. Now you may also see this fault too when initially setting up the machine, as when shipped, the table is all the way to the right up against that bumper. Now depending on how stuck we are, which is determined by how fast we were jogging when we hit that bumper, we may be able to unstick the table just by turning the ball screw by hand, which on the x-axis I can just reach under the table right here and turn it. I'm turning the, the ball screw counterclockwise when standing at the right of the machine, and I'm gonna, just going to pull this off about an inch. If you have the y-axis stuck, that is a little bit harder to access. If you have the table stuck all the way to the rear, what you can do is remove the front bellows covers here in order to gain access to the ball screw. Otherwise, you can remove the coolant tank and then gain access to the ball screw from the bottom of the machine. Similarly, for the z-axis, you can remove the bellows covers here in order to gain access to the ball screw. However, with the weight of gravity and the brake on the z-axis, it is highly recommended to go to uh, the coupler between the motor and the ball screw in order to unstick it. If we're not able to unstick the axis by hand, what we're going to have to do is gain access to the coupler between the servo motor and the ball screw in order to turn it with a pair of channel locks. So on the X axis specifically, what we're going to have to do is take off a couple pieces of sheet metal. On the ends, you have the cast tooling plate above this sheet metal here, but on the M axis that is removed. You see we have two socket head cap screws here, and then there's an additional two in the back. Uh, these are slotted on the MXs, so we can just loosen them a little bit and then pull that cover off. Now that I've got our first cover off, you can see the servo motor itself. We do have to gain access to the coupler underneath this plate as well, so I'm going to remove this guy too. So with our second cover off, I'm going to use a pair of channel locks in order to go around the outside of the coupler and turn it again counterclockwise from the right side of the machine. And we should only have to use the channel locks to get it unstuck from there. Um, we can turn it by hand on the coupler itself or again uh, go to the ball screw shaft on the right side of the machine and just jog it an inch away from the end of travel where we were stuck and then we can reassemble our covers. The Y-axis cover is located at the rear of the machine here. The Z-axis motor coupler is accessed through the panel on the left side of the column. It is a little bit more difficult to access, so I would recommend removing the left side enclosure access panel. The Z-axis cable chain is attached to the cover over the coupler, so you will not be able to completely remove the panel. It will have to be left hanging. And then finally, we'll reset the machine. We home our axis. Keep making chips.